Welcome to Lesson 2, Components of Logic Models. Adjust the volume on your computer now, if needed, so that you can hear the audio clearly. In Lesson 1, you were introduced to Logic Models, a useful tool in showing the alignment of district efforts to the system's goals and vision. Having a Logic Model can help you plan and monitor your program. This presentation, Lesson 2, will walk you through the components of a Logic Model and describe how the components work together to organize and display the connections between the need, strategies, outcomes, and long-term goals. Several examples of logic models will be provided in Lesson 3. After viewing this presentation, you should understand the basic components of a logic model, the interconnection between the components, and how this interconnection depicts the alignment of program strategies and goals to inform the monitoring process. Finally, you will understand how to construct a basic logic model for your program or initiative. Okay, let's get started. Prior to beginning your logic model, it is helpful to clarify your area of need with available data. In other words, the problem or issue you are attempting to address. To undercover your problem, you will want to consider conducting a needs assessment, checking available data, and prioritizing your needs. The first step in developing your logic model is to clearly state the need you are planning to address and the data that supports that need. Sometimes staff members have an idea for something to try, but have not clearly determined why it should be a priority to implement. Quality tools such as the five whys or the bone diagram, described in Lesson 1, can help state the reason more clearly. Sometimes you will start with the data. Either way, find supporting data from existing data or a new needs assessment. The next steps are to consider the long-term goals for addressing the need and determine the strategies you think can accomplish these long-term goals. You will then want to determine the resources it will take to implement the strategy, whether they are available or whether they could be secured. Finally, lay out the short-term and intermediate outcomes that can help you monitor the success of your efforts. You can write them generally at first. Eventually, you'll want a specific timeline for accomplishment and a SMART goal of what you will measure. A logic model can be utilized to organize and depict this process. Basically, a logic model depicts the order and connections between the need, the strategies and resources, the short-term and intermediate outcomes, and the long-term goals that you have identified. Thus, a logic model will enable you to organize and display the sequence and connections between the need, strategies, and outcomes of your program or initiative. First, note the need based on your review of the new or existing data. Next, fill in the approach that you have identified or developed to address the need and the resources needed to implement your strategy. Short-term outcomes represent first changes expected in knowledge, skills, attitudes, or behavior, i.e., direct outputs of your work, usually expressed in numbers. Be sure short-term outcomes include changes in knowledge, skills, and behavior of those who are implementing the strategy. For example, if your initiative requires training, you will want to set a short-term outcome associated with the number or percentage of individuals you would like to see trained, i.e. 100% of teachers trained in Program A. Remember to include process checks along the way, either as short-term or intermediate outcomes, and establish your expected timelines for each outcome. Intermediate outcomes should be the next changes expected in knowledge, skills, attitudes, or behavior. These are often the initial changes in student outcomes. Long-term goals are the ultimate outcomes or goals expected. Then check connections. Add arrows to indicate relationships between strategies, activities, and outcomes. Finally, discuss your draft model with other stakeholders and revise as necessary. Usually, you'll want to revise at least once. This model has depicted a simplified logic model for ease of explanation. However, logic models can and should be adapted for your program or initiative. 
In this example, the basic logic model has been modified to separate the strategies from the resources. You will note that the resources are now located at the bottom of the model. While the key components within a logic model, the need, resources, strategies, outcomes, and goals are crucial elements of the graphic depiction of your program efforts, you should not attempt to force your initiative into a restrictive model. The presentation of the logic model components should be adapted to represent the sequence of your program or initiative. For instance, if your program has multiple short-term outcomes, then the need can be moved to the top of the model, as in this example, to allow space for an additional short-term outcome column. To fully grasp what each component is designed to capture, it may be helpful to consider an example at this point. Let's begin by examining a very basic logic model. This example will enable you to focus on the components of a logic model prior to applying them within education. In this example, our fictitious company has identified a need to reduce the number of illnesses reported as a result of contaminated food. To address this need, they have decided to offer a food handler training for managers. As you can see, the first outcome, or short-term outcome, of this training is an increase in managers' knowledge of best management practices for food handling. Next, our example has several intermediate outcomes which are expected to follow from the increase in manager's knowledge. Managers are to provide in-house training for their employees, which in turn will increase employees' knowledge of food handling techniques. This will result in an increased use of best management practices for food handling. These intermediate outcomes will then lead to two long-term outcomes or goals. One, a reduction in the level of microorganisms, and two, fewer violations during inspections. Finally, if each of these early outcomes are met, then the intended long-term outcomes or goals of fewer illnesses reported should follow. By now, you know you must begin the monitoring process by clarifying your need with data, considering your long-term goals, and determining your strategies and resources. You also have knowledge of a tool that can help you lay out your short-term and intermediate outcomes and connect them to your long-term goals to help monitor the success of your program or initiative. Now that you have a general understanding of this planning tool and its components, Lesson 3 will walk you through several educational examples to help you create a logic model for your program or initiative.